guys and uh, welcome to the living room. Right, well today, first off I want to say a big thanks to everybody that took part in uh, the little survey to see what walk we were going to do. Uh, it's going to be the Cotswold Way walk and um, it's going to be filmed in block. So thanks ever so much for all your input on that guys, thank you. So the kit that I'm going to be taking on, on the Cotswolds uh, Way, um, in total the bag comes in at nine kilograms that's everything that i'm going to show you today okay uh, now obviously water would have to be put on top of that so i think the walk's going to take around about seven to ten days the vast majority of the equipment i'm taking is very similar to what i took on the pedas way there have been a few changes a few additions and a few things taken away so um right first things first then what I've done is I've treated all my equipment, all the fabrics, with Life Systems EX4 Plus Anti-Mosquito Insect Control, and it's for fabrics only, okay? Do read the instructions for this stuff. Basically, um, ticks in the United Kingdom are on the increase, and this basically kills ticks. If they touch it, they're dead apparently, so I've done all my my gear went out. Um, unfortunately, I was bitten by a tick a couple of weeks ago. Everything's fine. But anyway, let's crack on. So, my boots. These are my Mindell boots. They're absolutely brilliant boots. Cut a long story short, I've taken them to Tesco's. They've been resold. They're still a Vibram sole, okay? Um, they were away for two weeks and um, 70 quid. So I'm, I'm very pleased with those, that's that. Okay, my hat, it's just a baseball cap. I wanna draw your attention to this guys, all right? So don't ever think it's not gonna to happen to you. I hope it doesn't, but if it does, you know, if you look on there, can you see that little man? That's the little badge to support prostate cancer research. Okay, so buy yourselves a little badge, lads. We've all got to look after one another. All right. Anyway, that's that little bit done. So that's me out I'm taking. I've got myself some uh, new Bridgedale socks. They've changed all their range. This is the lightweight socks. So I've got three pairs of those. There'll be a pair on my feet and two pairs spare in my bag. A little midge net. Okay. I've got these uh, mountain mountain warehouse trousers. I think it's called mountain warehouse. Um, I bought them for the pedals way, but uh, they were a couple of sizes too big. I got the wife to put in an elasticated waist, and the reason they're too big is so that there's more crutch room to help cut down on the chafing. They're very light, they dry very quickly, and they do break off into shorts, should you wish, they're good. I usually wear merino wool underwear when I'm walking, um, but I can't get hold of any at the moment, so I've got hold of some ordinary underpants, but these have got elastic elasticated legs, Hopefully that will stop the legs from rolling up and, and digging in as well. So I've got two pairs. Yes, I know they're pink. <laughs> There's a nice pretty yellow pair as well. But uh, anyway, no one's going to see them. Well, hopefully. All right. So I've got a pair of those. From Quishy, which is a decathlon uh, here in the UK. They had a sale and I bought two of these long sleeved, quick drying um, they're very good, very good, very lightweight, um, long sleeve shirts. Two of those, okay. One to wear on the walk, one to wear with my sleep gear. And you've all seen this before, so I won't go into it too much, but uh, it's my red jacket, uh, which I feel is an absolutely brilliant jacket. So I'm taking that as well. So, pop that down there. The bag I'm taking is my Osprey Exos 
uh, 58 litre. This is it here. Um, I have got little things in the pouches. This tiny little pouch here, I got um, earlier on in the year. It's waterproof and I've got some emergency toilet paper in there. Let me show you quickly. Got some emergency toilet paper, there's my compass, there's a magnifying strip so I can look at detail on my map, and um, my camera will be going in there as well. Now I should be taking my phone, which is what you're on at the moment, but I want to try and use my uh, Panasonic. Try that out. Alright, so I'll tell you about that in a minute. In this waistband pocket, I've got my MSR filter. These are absolutely brilliant, guys. Let me just get it out and show you. It can um, siphon up and filter a litre of water a minute. Okay, you just put that in there. It siphons it through. Really, really good MSR filter. And I always back it up with purification tabs. So I'll just put that down there. That lives in that little pocket. And I've also got some rehydration salts, okay? Uh, when you're exercising a lot, you're gonna sweat, you need to keep rehydrated. Just drinking water doesn't do that, okay? You need rehydration salts as well. So that's that pouch. On the other side, I've got what I call my little tool kit or part of it. And it's just a tiny little um, bag. Let's get all this stuff out. It's just a tiny little bag with like spare batteries. Um, there's some paracord, okay. Spare batteries, some paracord, some shock cord. There's a lighter, which is also a torch. There's some cable ties. There's some Kindle um, mint, mint cake, all right. So it's just all little bits and pieces. And with my Swiss Army knife, which is in this little pocket here, I've got most of the tools I'll need to patch things up, sort things out. In that little container, which has been sealed with uh, Gorilla Tape, I've got my alcohol gel for sanitation, yeah? You could also use that because it's flammable to help start a little fire if, uh, if you needed one like to cook on if you run out of gas or something. Um, because I do filming, I've got another little phone cradle for my tripod, which is also a new tripod. It's only uh, seven inches tall, um, and I got it off of Amazon. I think it was about five pounds. And because it looks a little bit fragile, I've got a replacement uh, phone carrier head type thing. That makes sense. <laughs> it didn't make any sense to me, but there you are. All right, so that goes in there as well. Right. So that is basically the bag. There's no brain on the bag. I've taken that off. I've also taken off all the cinch down cords all the way around to give myself some extra room. Right, let's pack it in. So, the first thing that will be going in there is one of the two sleep mats I've got. Okay, now these are new. Um, I've got two of them because I want to get myself a little bit more comfort. Well, that goes in the first. There we are. Put that in there. That's a little keep together. There you go. Put that in there. So if I pack it whilst we go along, so you can see what's actually going in there. So one of those sleep mats is going there. The other one will go on the other side later on. There's the second one, all right? Just behind that sleep mat will be my spare clothes and electricals and stuff. So, spare clothes then. I've got two spare pairs of them Bridgedale socks. Just put that in there. Okay. There's that other long sleeve shirt that I got. 
Okay, so that'll be my sleeping one. I've also got in the cell, uh, decathlon or quiche cell, this um, long sleeved shirt, which opens all the way down. Okay, so that must be my extra warmth should I need it if things get cold. There's my little beanie hat, mainly for nighttime sleeping. Judging it. Pair of merino wool long johns. Uh, I find those comfortable to sleep in at night. <laughs> yes, a yellow pair of underpants. <laughs> okay, your spares. Let's have a pair of socks. And a lightweight pair of shorts so that when I'm cleaning my uh, hiking trousers or walking around camp, I've got a little pair of shorts to wear. So that goes in there. Also in that little bag will be my wash kit. Basically comprises of a razor, some uh, pseudo cream, toothpaste, a toothpaste and a toothbrush. So, so that's all in there, in a nice little bag. This is all basically pain relief, or pain management. So, in there, I've got a few boxes of Compete plasters. Now, what I've done is I bought about eight boxes of Compete plasters and I've broken those eight boxes down to fit them in three boxes. Does that make sense? Yeah. There's also a compete stick in there and a spare pair of spectacles. Next to all that is this little package, which is a tuber grip. Okay, it's like the elasticated bandage thing. And inside there, I've got all my different tablets. So there's aspirin, there's ibuprofen, there's paracetamol. There's anti-sickness uh, tablets, there's uh, antihistamine tablets, and because I suffer with gout, uh, if that was to kick in, it definitely mobilises you for a little while. I've got my medication for that as well. Uh, the tuber grip itself, obviously, can uh, double up and help should, I hope I don't, touch wood, but if I should twist an ankle or my knee, then I've got something there as well. There's also um, a pair of tick tweezers in there, and I've got some, um, what do you call it? I've got some ordinary plasters. Uh, yeah, I can't remember what they're called in other countries. Elastoplast, yeah, it's for little cuts. Right now, this is the uh, my electrical equipment. I've got the double USB, whoop, I'm about to catch it. Double USB plug for charging, okay? This is my, I, I don't use it that often. I want to try and use it on this one, but it's a Sony uh, HDR CX450. So I want to give that a try on this trip. With that, I need headphones so that I can play back. This is what I've been up to. <laughs> There's a couple of little cables. And I've got a very small power pack to charge everything up. Um, now this power pack is tiny. Look at it. It's absolutely tiny. Can you see that? All right. It weighs in about 125 grams, I think it is. Um, it's 10,400, is it milliamp volts? Or whatever that means, yeah. You've got a double um, USB port and two inlet ports as well. Got this off of Amazon. It's made by Charmast. Yeah, C-H-A-R-M-A-S-T, Charmast. And I think it cost me 34 pounds, and then you got delivery on top. And it definitely, because I've tried it, charges, stop that rattling, charges my phone at least two times, and out of uh, four light bars, I had 
two light bars left, so I could probably get three full charges of my phone. So that's good. Um, most of my charging up is going to be done from pubs, restaurants, and, and places like that as I, as I go along. All right. So that's my electrical. So all those live in there. For the moment, they'll go in that little bag so they're nice and safe and, and out of the way. Okay. Right, there's a towel, a lightweight towel, obviously to dry myself down. Goes in there. Now then, um, John from Hounds of Howgate. And his, his dog Moz, I think it is. I was watching John, look him up, he's really good, Scottish guy, does a lot of hiking up in Scotland there. Um, get to the point, Dave. Showed a little uh, trick. You know, when you finish walking for the day, you take your boots off, you want to put something on your feet to walk around camp, or maybe walk through a river crossing or something. You can wear flip flops, you could take Crocs with you. Me, Flip-flops, I can't stand that little thing between my toe, and Crocs are too bulky for me and too cumbersome. So what John showed me, now I don't know whether it's his idea or not, I've never seen it before, so I'm going to give John credit for it, is um, the insoles from an old pair of boots or shoes. This is so simple, it's unbelievable. Okay, You can modify them so they become flip-flops, or you can do what they call slipshod, which is you get yourself a big elastic band, and you just basically <laughs> elasticate to your feet and you've got yourself a nice little pair of lightweight shoes. Does that make sense? I thought that was a brilliant idea, so well done, John. Yeah, so that's, um, that's John's idea there, I believe. Hounds of Howgate, look him up. Right. So, I'll shut all that lot down inside this little dry bag. And that's that done. Right. Now, the next thing to go in there. This is my sleeping bag. Okay. However, it's also... Can you see that little bubble on the end? Let's see that. <laughs> yeah. Zinkoi, Matthew. Right, so thank you, Matthew. This was a present... Uh, for Matthew to me, it's actually a portable shower unit. How brilliant's that? It holds 10 litres of water. In essence, it's a very thick dry bag with a shower head on the end. How brilliant's that? <laughs> so what I've done is rather than having bags all over the place, I've got myself uh, another sleeping bag from uh, Decathlon, uh, Quishy as it's called. It's only one of them really um, lightweight ones, but it should be enough for what I'm doing. And it's the uh, Oblong design, not a mummy bag. Well, I can't stand them things, really. They, they, my feet need movement. So it's a little lightweight, I think it was about 20 or 30 pound sleeping bag. And I push that inside. Obviously, I don't want to put any pressure on that um, head there, so I put it between my legs, so it's a gap. Shut that down. Easier if I undone the valve. There we go. Push the air out. Seal the bag. Jobs are good. Then. So, not only have I got another dry bag, I've also got a little shower unit, and that's it's lovely to have a little shower when you can, uh, when you can, when you're, you're walking around. You guys that do hiking, you know what I mean. And then turn it around that way. The valve's undone. Just gently push down on it. I know it looks like I'm putting a lot of pressure on it, but I'm not. Get the air out. So I'm compressing it down, yeah. Turn the valve off. And that's it. <laughs> Been compressed down. So that goes in. Yeah. Right. My tent. Uh, you all know I, I love my Z-Pack duplex. This is my Z-Pack duplex tent. Absolutely fantastic tent. And it's inside another tent bag because it's easier for storing. Obviously I'm not gonna get out in here. You'll see this when we're on camp. 
Okay, you've all seen my portable weed pot. I, I can't say how wonderful these things are. You know, whether it's raining outside the tent or not, these are brilliant. Do make sure you keep it clean. The last thing you ever want is a UTI or a urinary tract infection. So a bit of soapy water in there, clean it all out. Jobs are good. Okay, it's obviously unisex. They're off of Amazon. They're only a couple of quid. Brilliant. And of course, if need be, once clean, it obviously doubles up as a water carrier should you lose all your bottles or, or whatever. Right. Next stuff, my food. Um, I'm only taking a couple of evening meals and some breakfast. And uh, on a previous video, if, if you go back a bit, um, you'll see that I was uh, experimenting with making my own freeze-dried uh, uh, meals, uh, basically by buying the bags that can be microwaved, you put your, your freeze-dried food in, put hot water in it, etc. You know, the type of bags I mean where the, the bottom opens out flat, yeah? So I've got those. I've got eight of these. You buy eight of them, it works out at 10p a bag, okay? 10p a bag. Where's that little thing there? No, no. Right, so I've got them. Curry noodles. Okay, these are from Morrison's. They're 20p a bag. Alright? Uh, jerky. I can't remember what it's called. Okay, so jerky. This is a big bag. Quite a lot of calories, all right? This was also from Morrison's, uh, and I think that was about um, maybe a pound and a half, two pound for a bag. So let's just say that was two pound, two pound 20, two pound 30. I've got myself a meal, two pound 30, all right? So that's, that's my meal. Uh, for dessert, um, I've got, also from Morrison's, Butterscotch Flavour Delight, 20p. All right, now, when you get these um, pre-made packets for adventure, foods, etc., and you get yourself a pudding, or even you get yourself some noodles, 20p, the cheapest pre-packed ones I can find were a fiver. Would you pay a fiver for that? Because that's what you're getting. Or maybe two of those, which would only be 40p, yeah? And the pudding, which might be like a chocolate mousse or something, which is this stuff, right? 20p in the pre-packed thing, the cheapest I could find was a fiver. Would you pay a fiver for that? If you're happy doing that, that's fine. Maybe no. Uh, it's not that I'm a skin flip or nothing like that, but uh, I just can't, I can't see the logic in it when you can get the ingredients and do it yourself. Likewise, with your breakfast, um, you can get these little sachets of uh, porridge, you can get them in all sorts of flavours, okay? I empty this into one of those little bags, same as I will do all the other stuff, like, you know, um, you can bung raisins in it, bits of dry banana, whatever you like, all right? So you get a box of 10 of these, and I think they're about, I don't know, a pound. So they're, what, what 10 p each, yeah? Well, let's say they're 20 p each, 30 p, even 50 p each. When you buy those old ones already made up with fancy labels on the front, fiver. Would you pay a fiver for that? Or two of them? Of course you wouldn't. Of course you wouldn't. So that's my little, um, my little mound, if you like. So I take all those. I've got four of these um, chocolate drinks. Okay. Now, one of them sachets does two drinks. So that's eight of them I can have. Put all that in there. Um, now I've tried again to give up smoking. Um, to work well my way, rather than having a cigarette, I've got myself a little bag of chocolate eclairs. So I can sit down, have me rest, and have a chocolate eclair rather than having a cigarette. Alright? So that all lives in there like that. So that's, that's my food. That's all the food I'm taking because I will be sourcing my food from the many villages 
and the towns I go through on the way. And that gives you now. Okay. Right, cook set. There's a reason that's already open. A small-ish gas cylinder. I know you can get them smaller, but I, I wanted this size. Okay, so a small gas cylinder. It should last me well enough. A collapsible. Huh? That's cool, then. And what I do is I pop it open, and you remember the spout, the shower head on my portable shower, that goes over the top to protect it so that doesn't get damaged. And I've got these half size, I've got these from Black's half size mess tins. Absolutely brilliant. If you're into MREs, uh, meals ready to eat, you know, where you put them in the water and boil them, they'll fit in there, no problem. Your lid, there's a frying pan. In there, I've got my head torch, my uh, head ga gas head for my gas bottle. Very good one, got that from Go Outdoors. I think it was about 15, 20 pound. It's fairly lightweight. I've got a titanium spoon and fork. No knife, because I've got my pen knife on my thing. There's the batteries in a little cartridge for my torch. Then there's this little gadget, which you can put your gas cylinder on so it stabilizes it a little bit. All right. And there's a small lighter. So that all lives in there. Nice and compact. My walking poles are my LEC carbon lights. These are really, really good walking poles. Absolutely terrific they are. I'm gonna, for the time being, set them on the top and just lock them off. Like that. Okay, and then Right in the back here, in the elasticated part, goes my second sleep mat. So these sleep mats weigh absolutely nothing. They're really, really light. Um, they're very strong. And I thought, well, you know, might as well have a bit of comfort, eh? The, uh, the walk is, uh, <laughs> thanks fella, can't remember your name at the moment, but during the survey, uh, one of the lads on there reminded me, or made me aware, that it's not 60 or 70, 80 miles, it's a hundred and something, so <laughs> it would be a bit of a shock to the system if he hadn't have done that for me. I would have found out so I've researched it, but, but thanks for that guy. Okay, now, that is the kit, all packed away ready to go weighs in at nine kilograms that's everything that's in there okay even stuff that i haven't put back in there just yet but everything i showed you is all in there it's everything i'm taking apart from water nine kilograms so i'm quite happy with that all right i'll put this filter away in a minute right i don't know how long we've been going but thanks ever so much for bearing with us but just something I wanted to, to show you. Now, you guys that you've been following me for a little while, um, even some of the new guys, and thanks ever so much, I really appreciate everything that, that you do. Um, you know that I tend to get the one in 50 thou ordnance survey maps, and then I mark out on there where I'm going in yellow, and then all the information I get from one of them trailblazer books, I scribble that on the side of the map, or along the trail, and then I cut out that section, so I reduce the weight and I've got all the information I want. Um, now you can, 
I've done the same sort of principle, but in a weirder sort of way. I'm trying something new. Yeah, you can get these little maps A to Z do a series of long distance walks. Yeah, the adventure series. And there's 16 long distance uh, walks that they've got uh, throughout the British Isles, okay? And th this brilliant little book, it's a 1 in 25,000 scale. They mark the track in yellow. Can you see that? Can you see that? They mark the track in yellow from the start to the finish. Now you can also see on there some additions from myself in red. Can you see those? Yeah? This book has got its own waypoints in it. Yes, yeah, so if you've got a GPS, you can use that with the waypoints with this book, all right? Brilliant little thing. This book goes from Bath up to uh, Chipping Camden, so it goes from south to north. The Trailblazer book, which is full of um, information, oh, sorry about that, got to wave my hand, uh, full of information like phone numbers and hostels, it tells you all about the area, history and stuff like that, okay, plus they have maps in it, all right, the Trailblazer book for the uh, Cotswolds Way, that's what we're doing in here, um, that runs from south to north, and I'm thinking, Whoop, I've got one going that way and I've got one coming back. Somewhere along the line I'm going to get confused. So cut a long story short, what I've done is I've correlated the maps in here. Now if you see there, there's a map and I've put little red marks on it. Went to the zeros in. Okay. So for every step of the way in this book, coming from north down to south, there's waypoints, there's information pertaining to a certain map, etc. I've highlighted the map in yellow. I've correlated the uh, waypoints from this book into this map book. Yeah. So if I'm reading the map and I walk along and I look at it and there's a waypoint, for example, uh, 049, I can think, 049. <sighs> What's happening in that area? I can then follow this track back to 049. So example here is 017, so it'll be this one. So I went 049, yeah. And I can read the information that's pertinent to that area. Now, conversely, not worth, I can be reading this book and think, well, oh, I wonder what the terrain's like around that area. So at the top, I've written in red the Ordnance Survey page on my map. So here, map 26 will be Ordnance Survey page 20. So I can go to page 20. There we are. I go to page 20. I can look up the waypoints. And I can correlate the information together, know where I am, know what the terrain's like, know what's in the area, etc, etc, etc. Does that make sense? This will be in my waterproof pouch, probably my jacket, this in a bag, tucked away inside there. Alright? So, there we are guys. So, well there we are guys. Thank you. Thank you. So once again, thanks ever so much for helping me on the survey. Um, hopefully we'll do the Thames Path next season. But for the moment, we're going to be doing the Cotswolds Way. It's about 110 miles long. Um, I think it'll probably take me between 7 and 10 days. I'm, I don't intend to rush it. Uh, I would like to have a, a zero halfway through. You know, get myself cleaned up and everything. See how we go. I would like to go into Bath for a couple of days, not sit in the bath for a couple of days, go into the city of Bath <laughs> for a couple of days and have a look around, yeah. Um, I wanna film it hopefully on my Sony as opposed to on my camera. And oh, um, I can't remember your name fella, but he was asking me about the resolution. 
I've sorted that out as well, or I think I have. I, I've done a couple little dry runs, and I've managed to get 1080p resolution on my uh, editing tool, and I tested it out last night, <laughs> up till one o'clock in the morning, and it looks like I've got the resolution sorted out, so, so thanks for that. So that, that gave me something to do as well. <laughs> but anyway, cheers. Um, right, don't forget, support prostate uh, cancer research, do get yourself a little badge, guys. Don't ever think it's never going to happen to you. It could do. I really hope it doesn't. Sincerely, all right. But um, you know, we've got to look after one another, lads. Let's let's get that sorted out. Um, that's about it. So thanks again, and uh, thanks for all my old subscribers for like bearing with me. Thanks for my new ones for coming along and joining the madhouse. And uh, thanks for all your comments and suggestions. Love to everybody. You be good, you be safe, and you keep smiling, and I'll see you on the bulk. Cheers, guys. All the best. Bye.